shed some light on the UFO phenomenon. Arizona Senator Barry Goldwater, President Gerald Ford, and President Jimmy Carter, who actually saw a UFO himself and filed a formal report, have all sought to have top-secret UFO information released to the public. All requests for that information were denied. Cover-up allegations aren't limited to the United States government either. Author Timothy Good claims that governments around the world are keeping UFO information top secret. And in his book, Above Top Secret, he claims only an elite few have access to that information. I would like to emphasize that very few people in governments have the faintest idea of what's happening. Because so little of the research is made known to top ministers. One country is bucking that trend. Belgium has acknowledged tracking unidentified, seemingly intelligently controlled craft in its airspace. Radar tapes released by the Air Force show an object jumping from 200 meters to 2,000 meters in one second, a distance of just over a mile. The Belgian Air Force has even put aside a plane to search for the objects. But the attitude of the United States remains very different. UFO experts claim our government is conducting top secret research into UFOs in the middle of the Nevada desert. South of a dry lake bed known as Area 51 is a place known as S-4, allegedly home to a super secret government research facility. In the course of our investigation, we found a scientist who says he used to work there. Robert Lazar was shocked when he first discovered what it was he would be working on. I got out of the bus, I was told to walk directly through the hangar, and uh, immediately, uh, even before entering the hangar, you can see the edge of a disc. Uh, this is your classic flying saucer, two inverted pie plates, if you wish, uh, with a segmented larger area dome on top. Within minutes of that, I finally realized that this had nothing to do with something the government was producing. And it was quite shocking because everything inside was small. This is a full-size craft, 30, 35 feet in diameter, maybe 40. Uh, but you're looking at, at uh, seats that are, you know, 18 inches off the ground, obviously made, you know, for, for something smaller. And certainly wasn't made for children to play in. Lazar says there were nine spaceships in all and he claims to have seen one fly. It began to lift off the ground almost silently. There was a hiss sound, uh, like a corona discharge, if you hear around high voltage systems, uh, accompanied by a faint, it probably would have been brighter at, at night, a faint uh, blue glow around the bottom as the craft approached about 30 feet, 20 feet, something like that off the ground. Uh, that corona discharge disappeared. Uh, the sound stopped and the craft stood there silently and uh, slowly drifted over to the left and then to the right. The government denies they're testing alien craft at S-4. Lazar no longer works there and nowadays spends his time working on one of his hobbies, jet car racing. He alleges that after he went public, security officers at the base threatened his life. He also says that his employment and military service records have disappeared. Despite repeated requests, the government can't find them. The subcontractor who hired him for the job at S-4 refuses to comment. But a few clues support Lazar's contention that he is a scientist and that he has worked for the government. This W-2 form indicates that he had been employed by the Department of Naval Intelligence. Before his stint at S-4, Lazar claims to have worked at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. Los Alamos officials can't find any record of him. But his name does appear in a laboratory phone book from that time. Reporter George Knapp was able to track down a few of Lazar's colleagues who could confirm parts of his story. But when they talked to Knapp, something strange happened. One after another had, had visits from, from government personnel who basically intimidated or told them to back off, followed them around. There didn't have to be any direct communication where an agent says, you keep talking to this guy, you're going to end up in a river. The message was very clear. Since Lazar's story broke, Area 51 has become a hotbed for UFO sightings. But are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you seeing this thing zip back and forth, or is it just... You see that? It just zipped to the left. See it again? While our cameras were there, a bright light appeared in the night sky. Utterly silent, it seemed to float below the mountaintops. Analysis of our videotape proved inconclusive. 
Those who might know the answers aren't talking. I've been covering organized crime in Las Vegas for, for 10 years, dealing with uh, mob hitmen and mob informants, uh, people who have been in the witness protection program. The fear that is generated by this UFO subject for people who really know about it far outweighs the kind of fear that the mob inspires. I mean, people are more afraid of our government than they are of organized crime. I am exactly sure of what I saw. I know what mainstream science is like. I know what, where physics stands. I know all of that. And this is an extraterrestrial craft. This technology is hundreds and hundreds of years in advance of us. And that's the end of that story.